everything. And, uh, but I'm excited for this morning. I love that God is still raising up the next generation. Amen. And uh, I'm excited for all of our young men in the church and young women and what God's doing in their lives. But I'm always excited and, and thankful for the young men that God's given me relationship with. And so I'm excited to have Brother Jared come this morning. Come on, brother. Bring the word. Love you. Proud of you. Thank you. Men of God. Amen. Amen. All right. My kids were uh, trying to guess Pastor Don's age earlier, and they were so kind. I think they started at 60, and then hit 65, and then they said 70, and his countenance changed really fast. And he's all, back up one. And so you are, you are young at heart, Pastor Don. We're really thankful. I'm thankful I'm your friend and get to spend time with you, and I learn a lot. Uh, I was playing a charity golf tournament with Pastor Don and we came to a hole where there was uh, some people, you know, sh selling paraphernalia from the Raiders and sports teams. And while I'm perusing around the table, uh, Pastor Don starts a conversation with one of the gentlemen there. And before you know it, he's got this guy's hand in his hand and this guy's repenting of his sin and turning his life to the Lord. And I'm like holding up a sign like, hey, how much is this Raiders thing? <laughs> it's like... I was like, dear Lord, forgive me. <laughs> I got to get my eyes on you, Lord. So uh, what you see is, is real in Pastor Don's life. Um, he, is a, he is a soul winner, and he really does love God and his people. And so it's an honor to be here this morning. Really thankful for you. Um, this morning, um, my, my nana, uh, who um, just received her reward, she just went and went to be with Jesus uh, last week, and so while, you know, we grieve here on this earth, she is having the time of her life, looking into the eyes of the one she's longed for. Ever since she was a child, uh, she's always wanted to be with Jesus, and she has imparted, uh, especially in my early days of just being in ministry, we would get on these phone calls, and I'd be trying to figure out what I should do, and they were telling me at this church, like, we need your, you know, your annual vision plan for what you're going to do, and I'm like, vision plan? Why do they want to know my eyesight? I don't get it, you know, and so I was so green around there, I had no idea what to do, and I'd call my Nana, and we'd spend uh, my lunch break talking on the phone, and she would just share with me just how important it is to have the anointing of God in your life. And she says, there's nothing better, Jared, than when you open your mouth, but it's not you speaking, it's him speaking through you. And she says, whatever the price you have to pay, just do it. She goes, oh, to be bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh, to be one with him, that's my desire. And I would just, you know, cry on the other end of the phone call. And so uh, my Nana, I actually have a, a voicemail from her that I saved from... This is a long time ago. This is from 2014. I was preparing to preach one Sunday, and I text her, hey, Nana, could you pray for me? And so she, she prayed for me on this, and uh, I want her to uh, pray for me again, all right? So you get to listen to this. Hi. Hi, Jared. This is Nana. I got your message, and I guess I didn't get back to you before you left, but I, I'm going to pray for you right now over the phone. Father, I thank you for Jared. I thank you for his love for you, Father. And I ask that as he ministers this morning, that the power of your spirit would come upon him. Cause him to flow like a mighty river. Release that river that is within him and that comes from the throne room of God. Father, I pray that this would be a very supernatural meeting, Lord, where the power of Jesus Christ is flowing and that people's lives are touched and they're changed by the power of your Spirit. I give him in your hands. I place him right there, Holy Spirit. And I ask you, Holy Spirit, to just flow like a river. And bless him, Father. Bless him, Holy Spirit. And Jesus, you be exalted in his life today. Overshadow him and keep him. May he be so blessed, and I thank you for it. Now in the name of Jesus, my Savior, and our Lord, and our God. I love you, Jared. <laughs> 
Amen. Amen. Yeah, her words still have power. <laughs> her prayers are going to be answered this morning. Uh, just a, a couple days ago, I was getting ready to uh, speak and share a, um, I was on a, got asked to be on a Pastors to Pastors podcast, and I texted a friend and said, will you pray for me? I'm getting ready to do this. In his text message, he said, uh, yes, brother, praying for you. And he wrote this in a text message, praying the Holy Spirit leads you and gives you the right words that is going to cut through like a two-edged sword through all the demonic forces holding the listeners in bondage. And today would be the start to their freedom in Christ. Man, as soon as he texted me that, the spirit of intimidation just came off my life immediately. And I didn't even know I was under its influence. So interesting. And I texted him. I said, James, I didn't even know this thing was messing with me. But I just felt supernatural boldness just be released in my life like an instant. It was night and day. I like that thing just left when I read your text message. And I was like, man, that had the anointing of God. And he texted me back. He goes, man, it was the Holy Spirit flowing through my thumbs as I was texting. And so... Uh, Paul is writing a letter to Timothy in 2 Timothy 1, verse 6, is, 6 and 7. And we don't know what's going on in Timothy's life, but he's dealing with something. He's got some thoughts that are not subjected to Christ. He has got some things that keep, have you had those late night thoughts before you go to bed that are rolling around in your mind and you're just trying to figure out what to do? And as Timothy had talked to Paul, Paul's response to him is this, Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on my hands. See, he didn't say, all right, I want you to go to this class. Uh, Timothy, I want you to, he's like, I want to remind you of something. Do you remember when I laid my hands on you, what was imparted into you? You have a gift, and we just, we, you need to stir that thing up, man. Sometimes we feel like the Dead Sea, but we just need to churn that thing up. Man, when my Nana was praying for me, I felt a stirring in my spirit. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. He's given us a spirit that is powerful. He's given us love, unconditional, unending love, and a sound mind. We really need this broken off our life, this spirit of intimidation. It needs to go. There are so many lies that are trying to stop you from fulfilling the call of God and what he's placed on you to do. You are all very strategically aligned for such a time as this. You could have been born in any other generation. You could have been born in any other time period in human history, but God chose you for this moment right here, right now, in the brink of a world war. Who knows what's going to happen? but God is not done with his people yet. The bride of Christ may look a little disheveled, but we're going to get our act together. And when the bride and the spirit in unison say, come, Jesus, come, he'll come back to the earth. And we need to be ready for what he's about to unleash. We need to be able to be people that hear his voice with ears that are clearly tuning out all of the negative news, all of the things that we can lose faith. And so I want to pray for a moment. Candace, you want to come up here, my sweetheart? This is my wife, Candace. Uh, we've been married almost 20 years, yes. And we have five children, and she's got one in the oven. That's right. So baby, baby number six. So we're really excited. We have three boys, and, this, and we have two girls, and this will be a girl. So we'll be three and three. So yes. And so if you want to send us uh, gift certificates to Target or baby places, we got rid of all of our baby stuff. <laughs> Thought we were done, but the Lord says, I got another blessing for you. So we are so thankful to be part of that. There's a, uh, there's a word that I had to look up the meaning of. It's called a foreboding spirit. And recently I was listening to a friend of mine preach about it. And foreboding means this, a sense of an impending evil or misfortune. If you've ever been, if you ever struggled with, you're always thinking something negative is going to happen. 
You always go to worst case scenario when the phone rings. You're always like, yep, I'm expecting it. Something bad's going to happen. If you could be under the influence of a foreboding spirit, and you may not even know it. I've, uh, a friend of mine texted me recently, and I felt encouraged to send this to him. And I, I sent him a prayer, and, he's, and his response back was, I had no idea that that's what it was. I always thought everybody thought this way. Everybody thought, you know, like what's going to happen, you know, is worst case scenario. And, and I just thought I was just being prepared and cautious. No, this could be something the enemy's trying to mess with you. And so we want to get some freedom tonight. All right. Or this morning, whatever time of the day it is. Amen. All right. So go ahead and stand with me really quick. We're going to be able to pray. Do you need help? Is there anything wrong? Yeah, this is saying it's not working. Okay, let's try. All right, let's try that. Is it working? All right, see that? That was the touch of the Lord right there. So we're going to pray. And uh, let's just close our eyes for a moment. I felt like I was supposed to do this before I preached, that there was supposed to be a, uh, a rearranging, like there's going to be a rearranging of how you receive information from here on out and how you interpret things. Instead of interpreting like, yep, I'm just expecting this is what's going to happen. I'm going to get fired or my boss is going to say this or my spouse is going to say this and you have all these thoughts. There's going to be supernaturally God is going to change the way you think we're going to take those thoughts and, and subject them to Christ and make it obedient to him and that his thoughts are higher than ours his ways are higher than our ways and we're going to allow the mind of Christ to be synced with our mind and you're going to feel a release supernaturally of this foreboding spirit of this spirit of intimidation that's coming against you and trying to lie to you trying to keep you idle trying to keep you bound trying to keep you paralyzed with fear and that's going to end this morning in Jesus name not just for you but for your children's children we're going to draw a line in the sand we're going to plead the blood and it's going to end today at this service in Jesus name so we just pray right now if you're dealing with that if anything I just want you to lift your hands to heaven and Jesus is going to touch you right now where the presence of Jesus is there is freedom the spirit of the Lord is here this morning so right now all over the room Jesus you see these hands and we just release healing power over their minds right now I bind that spirit that lying devil and I send it back to hell where it came from and Jesus I plead your blood over their mind over their thoughts right now Father, I pray that you would release over them, God. Lord, not, uh, I pray for the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation to permeate their mind right now. I pray for a washing right now, a cleansing in Jesus' name. The blood of the lamb cleanses you from every sin, but also from every thought, every thought pattern, everything the enemy has came and he's lied to you years and years. And he's even lying to you now saying, that's just the way you are. You may have been born that way, but it's not God's design for you to stay that way so we just partner with truth today that God is your father that he is your Lord that he is going to lead your life and you are going to be led by the spirit and his influence and the Holy Spirit is going to guide you not your thoughts not your emotions not your negative thinking no that ends today you are going to be led by the spirit of God right now in Jesus name so father I pray for a release now I pray for your presence to come right now and it would just rest on your people. Let your presence rest right now over them in Jesus' name. Let them experience the peace that surpasses all understanding right now, Jesus. Lord, that you would just begin to love on your people. Would you hold them for the years and years that they've been going through this right now, Lord? Would you bring them comfort, comfort, comfort right now in Jesus' name? I just pray this in Jesus' name. Let's just worship the Lord. We're going to sing this song. Because worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Jesus, you deserve the praise. 
praise you deserve it you deserve the praise you deserve the praise if you're overwhelmed this morning the presence of god is what you need let me tell you he when he comes into the room the peace that surpasses all understanding comes in the room when he comes in the room the the healing power of jesus flows into the room when he walks into the room joy unspeakable comes into the room Isaiah 9 says, the people that were walking in darkness have seen a great light. Those living in the land of deep, deep darkness, a light has dawned. For we, 2 Corinthians says this, for though we live in this world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of this world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. And we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. Yes, Jesus. We just release the river of God in this room right now, Lord. It says in Revelations 22 and in Ezekiel 47 that there is a river that comes from your throne. Lord, and there's trees on both sides. And Lord, that we get to eat from that tree of life, but the healing of those trees or the leaves of those trees is healing for us, Lord. So I just thank you for that river of life flowing right now into this room. We thank you, Lord. We used to sing an old song that I've got a river of life flowing out of me makes the lame to walk and the blind to see, opens prison doors and sets the captives free. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. And so do you. You've got the same river flowing out of you. River of God. John 7, Jesus is like, whoever's thirsty, come to me. And he says, I'll give you a drink. And he says, and then rivers of living water will flow out of your belly. Thank you for that river. We thank you for that river. Come on, let's just press in this morning. Man, I feel the presence of God here. I feel the Lord stirring up some gifts in this room. I feel the Lord awakening people in this room. I feel the Lord reminding you of prophetic words you received decades ago. He's bringing them back to the forefront of your mind, reminding you that even though his word hasn't came to pass, it does not mean it's null and void. No, Isaiah 55 says his word will always accomplish everything everything it sets out to do it will achieve every purpose for which it's sent to do so father i pray for those words right now if you've got a word that you've been hanging on to and it hasn't came to pass just lift your hands lord you see the promise that they're holding on to lord i pray lord every promise is yes and amen so god while we are waiting lord you are working behind the scenes while we are pressing in lord you are rearranging you are doing things that we cannot see and so we put our trust in you this morning we put our hope in you jesus we don't put our hope in our government or our politicians they will always let us down lord we put our trust in you we pledge allegiance to jesus christ lord of all and he is lord of our lives and that's where we place our trust he is our anchor he is the solid rock on which we build our lives we trust you jesus and we believe you we believe that you are going to fulfill every promise lord you are not a man that you would lie. We just thank you for your power. First Corinthians says, you may be seated. I don't want you to get tired. They need to be seated. These poor people, I made them stand for a long time. Can you keep doing that or do you need to? You do your best, sweetheart. Um, you can go sit down. That's okay. Yeah, go sit down. Thank you. I just love having her close to me. 1 Corinthians 2.4 says, My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. Let me read that again. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. You have power. Do you realize that? You have power. You are God's chosen people. You are his vessels that he has chosen and designed that equipped with supernatural boldness to be alive on this earth, that you get to walk with a power and the presence of God radiating off your life. That is really cool. That is good news to people that are lost and dying that are hopeless all around you. Um, I recently bumped into a, a former student of mine. I, I youth pastored for about 10 years. 
in the Elk Grove area, and my wife and I were at lunch, and right after we finished our meal, uh, this young man, a server at the at the restaurant, goes, hey, Pastor Jared, and I'm like, oh, hey, and I'm trying to see, because he's 10 years older than I remember him, and he's like, hey, it's me, Joseph, and I said, Joseph, so good to see you, how are you doing, and he's like, hey, good, and I said, um, you know, what's new in life, he goes, oh, well, you know, I'm going back to college, and telling me a little bit about his career choice. And I was like, oh, that is so good. He goes, yeah, I'm plugged into this church. I'm like, that's amazing. It's so good to hear when kids that were in your ministry are still serving the Lord, you know? That's a good thing. And so he's like, yeah, I'm a small group leader. And I said, man, that's so encouraging. And he goes, yeah, every time I share my testimony, you're a part of my testimony. And I said, oh, really? I, I don't, what happened? And he says, you don't remember when I came into your office with my parents? And I said, no, please help me remind me. He says, yeah, I was, in, um, I was in the sixth grade, and from age five to age 11, I had been dealing with uh, the separation anxiety disorder, and basically every day I'd wake up and I kept feeling like my parents were going to leave me or they're going to abandon me. And he says it was so bad, like I, I wouldn't socialize with people. I had to be by their side. So they didn't know what to do, so they brought me to your office, and they asked me to pray for you. Um, so, I, so, I, so you prayed for me, and he says, Pastor Jared, it wasn't even like this long, dramatic prayer. It was like a really simple prayer. But from that day, I've been set free. I have never struggled with it ever since. And I was like, wow, Joseph, that is incredible. I am just hearing this after, you know, 10 years. I would have liked to know that this was, you know, what happened. And I just realized something, you know, sometimes the very thing that we do and as we pray for people, we may not even see the answers to those prayers. All the while, I never even knew that this young man, I, I didn't even know this, and I just found this out like last month. I just want to encourage you to pray for people. Everywhere you go, the greatest, you know, little sentence you can say is, how can I pray for you? You'd be amazed at how often people will ask for prayer. And, uh, and you're, it's not about the length of your prayer. It's not about how polished your words are. No, it's going to be the power of God just using you. All God is looking for is a willing vessel that he can manifest himself through on the earth. And if it wasn't, a, I mean, he could have just ended this whole thing once Jesus died on the cross and was resurrected from the dead. But no, he left people behind and said, now go. And, he, and they go and they wait. And they wait for this. They had God in flesh, but they had not met God in spirit. And so God in spirit shows up 50 days after the resurrection in a prayer meeting. And, you know, I, I could imagine like, you know, they've been with Jesus, you know, I imagine he had long hair because that's what the pictures look like, you know, cool beard. And, you know, they, they, were, they met Jesus, the son of God. And then, you know, Jesus high fives the Holy Spirit and he's coming to the earth. And now it's like Holy Spirit's about to come. I could imagine they were waiting for like a knocking on the door like, Hello? It's Holy Spirit, open up. And, you know, he walks in. He's like, hey, guys, I'm Holy Spirit. Jesus said you were waiting on me. I'm sorry. I got a little bit delayed. Thanks for hanging in there. You guys prayed for 10 days in this prayer meeting. Man, I like everybody. All right, who wants some power? You know, they, they kind of kind of expected that. But then all of a sudden, Holy Spirit comes, and it's not in the form of a person. But all of a sudden, like the sound of a mighty rushing wind fills the place where they were at. And all of a sudden, what seemed to be tongues of fire above their heads and, all, and these, this message starts pouring out of their mouth. They're, they're, they're praying in languages that they had, nobody had ever taught them. And then there's people obviously mocking, but then there's also some spectators going, hey, he is not from my country, but he's speaking. Hey, same thing. Like, I can interpret what he's saying. He's, but he's not a relative. He didn't travel with us to this big festival. What is going on? And here's what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit took all of these different languages from all the different regions and unified it. And guess what? The message was the same. They were all worshiping God and giving him praise. So this is what the Holy Spirit wants to do. He wants to unify the body of Christ again. In the last two years, it has been nothing but division. We need a move of the Spirit again. We need the Holy Spirit to unite our hearts again and not 
not based on political lines or who believes in this or who thinks this. It should be simply that we are brothers and sisters in Christ. Wow. Woo, that'll preach. Acts 4.30 says, stretch out your hand with healing power and may miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. We're going to pray at the end here, and I really believe we're going to see miracles today. I was looking at your prayer wall, then I was looking at your answer wall, and I'm like, wow, look at all of these answers to prayer. Look at all of these testimonies. Look at all these miracles of what God has done. Have you guys heard the news lately? Muslims are being visited by the man in white. Did you hear about that? Muslims are dreaming dreams and converting to Christianity because they're being visited by the man in white. Have you heard about the outpouring of the spirit that's happening in California? Have you heard about all the people that are getting saved? People are saying it looks like it's another Jesus people movement. Have you heard about his power to heal that's spreading all over the city? Have you heard about miracles that are breaking out? What news did you guys think I was talking about? I'm talking about the good news that Jesus saves, and we need more good news. Proverbs 25, 25 says, like a drink of cool water refreshes a weary, thirsty soul, so hearing good news revives the spirit. Didn't your faith just get pumped up for a moment? You went from, oh, the news to, oh, that news. Yes, that's the news. That's the good news feed that you need to subscribe to. Because you can find yourself find, being negative. It's like the overflow of the conversations that you have. Think about the last two weeks. What were you talking about? Were you talking about the goodness of God? Were you talking about how he has changed so many people's lives? Have you talked about all of the answers to prayers that you've had for years and decades? Or were you sitting and talking about all the things that we have no really power to control right now? And we're wasting our emotional energy where we, could be, where we could be filled full of life and speaking words of faith over people. Proverbs says that the power of life and death is on the tongue. Like we actually, we can curse the enemy. We can break the power of those demonic spirits and also we can speak life over each other, over our families, over situations. Every time you start hearing about somebody worrying in your house, just go, I break the power of that. No worry is allowed in this house. Jesus never worried a day in his life and I'm supposed to be like Jesus. So it doesn't mean I have my head in my sand. It just means I'm a part of a different kingdom. He says that he takes care of the birds of the air and the flowers of the field. How much more valuable am I to him? So I don't even have to worry about tomorrow. No, I am being present in this moment today. So I, we, we keep that. I believe Jesus is jealous for California. He wants California so bad. And everybody, I just break off all the word curses over our golden state. All these people that have, you know, moved away and it's like, California, good riddance. Hope you have an earthquake and fall into the ocean. Listen, the only shaking we're going to have is from prayer meetings and revival breaking out. That's right. And then they're all going to come back. Can I come back? Sorry. You can't afford the houses anymore over here. <laughs> One of my neighbors, um, his name's Josh, and when me and my wife, we moved into a, a home about a year and a half ago, and the kids and I were driving by, and we saw these sparks flying in this garage, and I'm like, what in the world? So we pull over and look, and this man is... Uh, um, blacksmithing in his garage, making an axe head. And this is during COVID, so there's like nothing going on. I'm like sitting there like, hey, go get some popcorn, son. You know? So we walk up and, you know, and I look, and this, this is a gigantic man, really buff, and uh, he's got Marine flag. And I said, hello, hi, sir. <laughs> Uh, me and my kids just couldn't help but to see this, uh, what you're doing. Is it okay if we watch you? And he's like, hi, I'm Josh. Yeah, come on in. And so he's making these ax heads, and was, we, we strike up a conversation with him, and it was really cool. And at the end of it, I said, hey, Josh, is it okay? Um, or I said, Josh, is there anything we can pray with you about? And so um, Josh kind of looked puzzled, 
Uh, I don't think he wanted us to pray for him, but he saw some children and maybe felt obliged. And he's like, uh. So this was the biggest thing that was mounting in Josh's heart. Um, Can you pray for these communists not to ruin our country? So I said, yes. (laughs) Okay, I'll pray. (laughs) Yes, dear God, help us. So prayed for Josh, um, and he had like a home gym, a workout gym in his garage, and so me and my me and my oldest son, and I think Judah came too. Yeah, me and two boys, we went and worked out with them. So we kind of stayed in touch over the last year or so, and then I got a text that I never thought I would expect. Josh texts me uh, the first week of November and said, "Jared, I just had a powerful encounter." And I don't know who to talk to. Um, I think you said you're a pastor, but if that's offensive to your denomination, just I'm sorry. (laughs) He said, could we meet and have coffee? I was like, yeah, absolutely. So I met with Josh, and um, he said, hey, I I just got to share the long, long story with you. I said, yeah, absolutely. I'm all ears. Let's go. He tells me about his life uh, growing up in a Jewish household, never knew anything about Jesus, never knew anything of the New Testament, and went all the way through bar mitzvah, but a lot of it was just forced on him. He wasn't a uh, practicing Jew, and he um, goes off uh, into college and then joins the Marine Corps, and he said, you know, one of my best friends was a Christian in the Marine Corps, but, you know, we didn't really talk about God too much and different things, and he, he said, get out of the Marine Corps, move out here, and he said, but here's where, this is where the story turns. He says, I, for the last 30 days, the whole month of October, I've been feeling this drawing to Jesus, and I don't know why. I feel this curiosity about Jesus, and I don't know what's going on. And he said, I'm driving home from a hunting trip. And he said, all of a sudden, I feel the presence. And I believe it's Jesus. So I go, is that you, Jesus? Jesus. And all of a sudden, Jared, he goes, I'm driving my truck, and I just feel like he wraps his arms around me and holds me, and I felt pure love for the first time in my life. And this man is bawling in front of me, and he's like, I'm sorry. My dad said I'm a wuss if I cry, and I was like, oh, don't worry, man. Welcome to the club, man. You're good. So he's just bawling his eyes out, and he goes, I just don't know, like, is this normal? Is this, like, how people find Jesus? He goes, because I talked to my best friend from, the, from boot camp, and he said, you know, he didn't really have that experience. I said, well, I've had that experience. I know lots of people that have had that experience. And remember, he knows nothing of the New Testament. So I opened my Bible and said, hey, here's a story of kind of describing what Jesus did for you. He's, Jesus is being questioned by a religious leader named Nicodemus and comes and Jesus says, unless you are born again, you will never enter the kingdom. It's this moment where you're not going back into your mother's womb, but the spirit of God brings you into the brand new life that God has always destined for you. And he goes, man, that's what it feels like. I think differently. I see differently. Man, like even the music I listen to, I can't listen to it all the time. Like, I think a lot of it was devil music. And I said, yeah, it probably was. (laughs) It probably was, Josh. He goes, yeah, I I just can't. So I gave him some Christian, you know, metal music that he really likes now so he can listen to it. And so Josh was just now born again, filled with the Spirit of God. And he's been on this journey. It's so cool. I meet with him every week. We, we go through the Bible. He's reading the Gospels. He's asking questions like, how did Jesus, like, how did John the Baptist know Jesus? Like, he just, I go, well, they were cousins, you know, they grew up together. He goes, wow, okay. Um, you know, how come Jesus says This, I'm not trying to say Jesus contradicts himself, but in Matthew 5 and 6, you know, he's talking about forgiveness. And he says, like, if you don't forgive your brother or sister, then your heavenly father won't forgive you. He's like, I thought, like, once we're saved, we're saved, right? You know, everything. I said, yes. I said, Jesus is in the middle of preaching a message, and he's talking about what the kingdom of God is like. He says, you've heard it say, you've heard it said, don't commit murder. But I tell you, even if you have murderous thoughts, you're committing a sin. He's saying, hey, as much as you've been forgiven, you're going to have to extend that same forgiveness to others. And later, Jesus' disciples come to him. It's the only time Jesus' disciples, you know, they, they saw Jesus do all the miracles. They never said, Jesus, teach us how to do these miracles. No. 
give us more faith for miracles. No, Jesus, one of his disciples comes to him and says, how many times do I forgive my brother who offends me? Seven times? Jesus like, 70 times seven, what? And they say, Jesus, increase our faith. <laughs> we need help with this. We can believe you for the signs, wonders, and miracles, but when it comes to forgiveness, oh man, that's, that's the hard stuff. It's easy to get up and shout and run around and let's pray, yeah. But then when we start talking about the deep, rooted issues in our heart of forgiving people that have hurt us and wounded us. That's the real stuff. That's how you've been truly transformed. And he goes, man, I'm going to need help with that. I'm going to need help with that. I said, guess what? You are going to receive help. I said, Jesus is softening your heart in such a powerful way. You're going to be able to forgive your family. You're going to be able to forgive the people. And so he was a, a testimony of that. It was He was at Thanksgiving with his in-laws. And usually Thanksgiving is... Uh, a, um, a huge argument over conspiracy theories and different, um, you know, things going on and whichever news cycle they subscribe to. And he said, uh, and his wife is not a believer yet, but we believe in that she's going to come to faith. And at the dinner table, when somebody drops, you know, you know, that first little hint of something political, and then, and then everybody's waiting for Josh to explode on the scene with all of his, you know, <laughs> propaganda as he normally does. And all of a sudden, Josh pauses and goes, hey, this is a time to be thankful, not talk about politics. And everybody's like, <laughs> and his wife looks at him and she's like, is that Jesus Christ? <laughs> He's like, yes, it is. <laughs> the heart transformation of what's taking place in this young man. Josh is a seed of what's to come. Just like he's visiting Muslims, he's showing up into Marine Corps lives right now. He's showing up into the people with the hardest of hearts, and they're going to melt like wax. Why? Because the love of Jesus is pulling on them. The love of Jesus is compelling. The kindness of the Lord is going to lead them to repentance. He wasn't listening to a message. He was pull the, the spirit of Jesus was pulling on him, and people People that have been praying for him for years and years, their prayers were being answered in a moment. In Luke chapter one, you have this, this crazy scenario where Zechariah is in the temple and he has been chosen by lottery to be able to burn incense in the holies of holies. And it's just like, when, it's like, you know, the thing that you'd waited for your whole life as a priest, you know, and so he gets this moment to do this. And while he walks into, he's getting ready, he, you know, he's waving at his family, going in, and then they're like, all right. He goes in, and all of a sudden, an angel of the Lord shows up and says, Zachariah, don't be afraid. When you see an angel, you should be afraid, okay? Let me just say, like, if I see an angel, I'm not going to be like, hey, what's your name? I'm going to be like, hitting the floor, don't kill me, you know? <laughs> Zachariah, don't be afraid. Your prayer has been heard. This prayer that Zechariah didn't pray in the morning, didn't pray the week prior, or didn't even pray the year prior. It was the prayer that he gave up praying decades ago. God answered that prayer. Think about that. What prayer have you given up praying because you think that all hope is gone? What if today the answer to that prayer is gonna manifest? What if God has not turn a deaf ear to your prayer, but he's waiting for his perfect timing to answer your prayer. And maybe today's the day that your prayer has been heard and he finds out that he's gonna be a father. <laughs> he could have been, you know, he's, the, he's the age of a grandfather, you know, and he finds out he's gonna be a dad. His wife's gonna be a mother and they're gonna give birth to the forerunner of Jesus Christ. How special, how powerful is that? Pastor Don, I was praying for you this morning, and one of the things I wanted to encourage you with is I felt like the Lord wanted me to, to and you, you would, I think you know this, but that your words have serious weight. The words that come out of your mouth, they have so much weight, and when you were up here praying I mean, I, everything you were saying, I'm like, man, angels are being released. The devil's getting his teeth kicked in this morning. I mean, there's power being released. And like your words have serious weight. There's an anointing. There's an authority that you carry. You've carried for decades and decades. And I just want to remind you that 
when you pray for somebody, all hell gets scared. And all heaven rejoices at the same time because the angels are waiting to go on assignment. You know, they don't like, they don't like being idle up in heaven. They're like, send us, let's go, let's go do some work, let's defeat, you know. In the second heaven, there's all these like principalities and rulers, and you know, like, send us there. Come on, Pastor Don. And so I just want to remind you, like, your words have serious weight and serious authority. And that, and even in, when you're talking amongst your people and you just, you hear of what they're going through and you just speak words of life, man, it fills them up so much. Will you guys stretch your hands towards Pastor Don this morning? Father, we thank you for this man that you've entrusted so much responsibility to. And we thank you that his words are not empty words, they're not just cliche words, it's not just what Pastor says, but his words have serious weight and authority. So God, I thank you for what you're gonna speak through him. I thank you for what he's prophesied it will come to pass. Lord, I thank you for every prophetic word, vision, and dream that you've given him. Lord, and I thank you for the things that sometimes he holds back because he's just not sure. I pray for a supernatural courage and boldness for him to prophesy even more in this season, Lord. We need more prophets to emerge, Lord, and to speak the word of God boldly with, Lord, I, I know that he has got so many things that he's been waiting on you for. Lord, I pray that this would be a season like Zechariah, that his prayer has been heard. Would you answer things that nobody else knows about? Would you answer the things that he's been crying out for for decades? Let it be a sign and a wonder to him in this next season that you have not forgotten. And I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. I was reading about, um, I was reading about Noah the other day and when he was looking for, you know, whether or not the water had receded after the flood, he would send out a dove. And in Genesis chapter 8, verse 9 says, but the dove found no resting place for the sole of her foot. And in Luke 3, it says, and then the Holy Spirit, when Jesus was being baptized and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove and a voice from heaven said, you are my son in whom I'm well pleased. The Holy Spirit is looking for a place or a person to rest on. And Jesus had the Holy Spirit descend on him like in the form of a dove. And he wants to be your resting place, a place to find comfort, a place that's safe. Uh, I remember reading about Benny Hinn. And in his early days of getting to know the Holy Spirit, he went to a Catherine Kuhlman meeting. And he said, I snuck out of my house. He wasn't even supposed to go. And he sneaks out of his house and he gets in line and, and there's all these people waiting to get in the building, he said. And as I get into the building, they start worship because my heart was beating out of my chest. And it was, he says, it wasn't because the building per se was sacred. It, it was what Catherine Kuhlman carried on her life. She had allowed the Holy Spirit to find a resting place for her. And it's not because we all have the Holy Spirit in us, but it's the, it's the manifestation of the Spirit of God resting on us. Have you seen those people that come out of like a prayer meeting and their eyes are all glistening? I mean, Moses comes out of a 40-day prayer meeting with the Lord, you know, and they're like, hey, Mo, put a shield over your face, bro. Like, you are blinding us with the light right now. And you could see the difference, the countenance of people that have just been fellowshipping with the Lord. There's something different about them. Sometimes they get accused of being on drugs, okay? It's all right. You know, we should be happier as a God's people. I just want to say, we should be happy as God's people. And uh, in his presence, we experience peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Romans 14, 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Ask yourself, when was the last time you were happy, smiling, and laughing? If it's been a while, come on. This morning, the river of God is going to be released in your life, and you are going to smile. Psalm 1611 says, you will show me the path of life. In your presence is the fullness of joy, and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Proverbs 17, 22 in the Amplified says, a happy heart is good medicine, and a joyful mind causes healing. His presence would rest on, you remember when his presence was resting on Peter? 
in Acts chapter five, verse 15 and 16, it says, as a result of the apostles' work, sick people were brought into the streets on beds and mats so that Peter's shadow might fall across some of them as he went by. Crowds came from the villages around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those possessed by evil spirits, and they were all healed. Everybody say, all, all. Man, just his presence resting on Peter, his shadow would send people getting instantly healed, getting people instantly delivered. What rests on you is so important because your shadow, your shadow can cast out devils or it can cast doubt on others. Think about that. Think about what has been emanating off your, off your life over this past season. I really believe God is wanting us to say no to all of these other things, all of these other distractions. You know, you have, a, you have a table set before you every morning, the Spirit's banquet table where he wants to download fresh revelation and fill you with power and wonder. Or you have the table of distraction, which has every news paraphernalia cycle and every conspiracy theory and everything that's gonna cause doom and gloom in your life. And you get to choose where you're gonna spend that time. I want to encourage you, first thing, when you wake up, don't gaze on the news station or the TV. Gaze into his word. Get lost in his eyes, those eyes that are a flame of fire, that are full of unending love, that he is an ocean that you can sail in and never find the end of it. It's, he's under, he, you can never fathom God when you spend time with him. Are people leaping at your greeting? Luke chapter one says this in 41, 42, at the sound of Mary's greeting, Elizabeth's child leapt within her and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she gave a glad cry and exclaimed to Mary, God has blessed you above all women and your child is blessed. Who benefited the most from the presence of God, Elizabeth or the baby in her womb? John, the baby, was filled with the Holy Spirit just because the mother of Jesus was walking by and shouted and said something. Think about that. People around you will be filled with the Spirit just because you're carrying the presence of God on your life. People can get healed. Listen, Jesus said you would do even greater things than me when I go to the Father. We have to believe for these things. We can't settle any longer for living at this lower level. No, we're actually seated with Christ in heavenly places. We are royal priesthood set apart for him. We are his chosen vessels on this earth. Let me remind you, church, it is not over yet. It is just the beginning. God wants to do something right here, right now, and he wants to use you. His presence, when it rests on you, it'll rest on your children. And his presence awakens and unlocks gifts in them. I remember a time I was driving home from a family get-together and uh, I was in the season of trying to figure out what to do next in my life. Candace, you want to come up? Give these people hope that I'm almost done. And I'm trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do next in life. And uh, I remember I had worship music in the background playing. And as I was talking to my oldest son, Noah, he was, he was eight years old at the time. All of a sudden, I heard him speaking, but I'm like, this isn't my son speaking. This is like the Lord speaking through my son. And I just said, hey, Noah, dad is, um, dad's trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do next in life. You know, should I be a a senior pastor? Should I, you know, be an associate pastor? Should I go be a missionary? Um, You know, I have all these opportunities and I don't know what to do. What should I do, son? And then my eight-year-old boy in the back of the car goes, dad, if you keep worrying about titles and positions, you'll never make a difference in people's lives. I started crying. I was like, yes, Lord, I needed to hear that. (laughs) Out of the mouth of babes. I remember last summer we were uh, speaking at an outdoor camp and I, I went to my second born son, Judah, and I said, Judah, I felt like I wanted, God asked me to have you pray for me. And so Judah just puts his hand on my shoulder and he pauses for a second and he just utters this simple phrase, Holy Spirit come, and that's it. And that night, the Holy Spirit came with power. 
So much so, man, words of knowledge were flowing like I've never experienced before. The whole church, I mean, it was so supernatural, but God answered the prayer of my child. The dove found a place to come and rest. I remember just recently I had a, I had an error in judgment and I got mad at my kids and I lost my cool. And so I asked, um, a friend of mine, a mentor told me that he would ask his kids after he would lose his cool. And don't look at me like that, like you guys have never made a mistake. My gosh, man, these glares are strong up here. Thought it was the lights, it was their eyes. So mentor of mine said, hey, when I had lost my cool, I'd actually get down on my knees and ask my children to pray for me. And I asked them to forgive me. So I remember I grabbed my third born son, Levi, he's 10. I said, Levi, can you pray for dad? First of all, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have raised my voice like that. And I need you to forgive me, but I also want you to pray for me. So I got down to Levi's level. Levi put his little hand on my shoulder and said, God, thank you for my dad. And I just pray that the next time he gets upset, that he would just ask you what to do. Amen. It's like, yeah, that's probably what I should do. <laughs> I think that's smart. It's really smart. His presence is where you're going to find the pattern for your life. You can have all these people telling what to do, what, you know, I have a lot of opinionated people around me and they've told me a lot of various things of what I should do and where I should go and what call I should answer and all these things and I, they mean well. But you know where I receive the pattern for my life? In his presence. In his presence, when I get alone with him, he's the one that speaks to me. Moses is up on the mountain and he receives the pattern for the tabernacle. He, Moses could have done what, other people would have encouraged him to do a lot of like the leadership books would have told him to do in the conferences. He could have went to Egypt and learned, you know, like, hey, I, I, I know Egypt knows how to build beautiful palaces. I'll take a page from Egypt's book. I can go to Persia. God, if you really want me to build you something beautiful, I'll go to Persia and get all of their fine linens and do, I'll learn from them. Instead, Moses receives everything in the presence of the Lord. Every detail, every measurement, everything that he needed to, to, to build the tabernacle. You need to be in the presence of the Lord with all of the things that you are thinking about, dreaming about, worrying about, in his presence is where you're gonna find every detail for your life. He will speak to you in his presence. The other day I was listening to a pastor of mine and he was talking about uh, a plant that he had had in his office for 17 years and it was just this tiny little plant. And he said, most of the time I didn't have water, but it would get, you know, my leftover coffee as I was leaving the office. So, you know, it was a caffeinated plant. And he said he moved offices and decided, you know what, it's time to bless this plant and I'm going to put it in a bigger pot. He says when he did that in a short amount of time, it blossomed a beautiful flower and it was all because it was planted in a different environment. After 17 years of being in the wrong culture, it was now planted in the, in the right environment. You were made for the spirit. You were made for his presence. You are a people of his presence. Moses says, God is like testing Moses and says, Moses, go on on to the promised land. Get out of here. Go ahead. And Moses is like, what do you mean? Exodus 33 is like, how are we supposed to be distinguished from all the different people groups unless your presence goes with us? That's the big marking on our life is the presence of God. And I just want to encourage you, it's the presence of God is what's going to deter, like it's going to set you apart from all the other religions. All I mean, there's a lot of people who are like, I like Mormons, they're really nice. I said, yeah, I have a lot of people that are non-Mormon that are really nice too. But it's the presence of God is what's going to separate you from everything else. They're going to sense something when they're around you. The other day I was in a meeting with a guy and he was a coach. The ministry I work for is Fellowship of Christian Athletes and he's sharing with me his story. And I could see like some things were not connecting. And he was just like, hey guys, I, I, you know, thanks so much for your time. I got to go. And I said, hey, before you go, is it okay if I just pray for you? And he's like, yeah, just, just pray. I said, all right. After I got done praying for him, 
he stayed for another 30 minutes. His whole countenance changed. Everything, like, just a moment with the presence of God. Reawakened, realigned something in his mind. All of a sudden, he's not agitated. And I was like, I was done with the meeting because I'm like, I got to go do this. I got this Zoom call coming up. I got to prepare. So I'm I walked away from the table. Another staff member was there. And I'm like, that guy's just still sitting there, you know? And I sit down. I'm like, what is going on? And now this guy actually is thinking about joining our team now. So it's like just a moment in the presence of God can change everything in an instant. And I know it's such a simple message, but yet in the last couple of years, there has been this like pushing away from the presence of God and this partnership with fear, intimidation, doubt, unbelief. And God is like asking us to like push away from that table, push away from those things and stay in his presence. Stay and be intentional to be in his presence, especially for what he wants to do and release in your life. Will you stand with me this morning? Anybody in here named Mary? Is there a Mary? Mary going once, going twice. Anybody have a family member named Mary? Mary. Oh, we got two, three. We got three Marys in the house, four Marys. The other day I was, um, there's this scripture in Isaiah 54 and it says this, sing, sing, O barren one. You who have never bore a child, burst into song, shout for joy for you have never been in labor because you, because more are the children of the desolate woman than those that have had a husband, says the Lord. And then he says this, enlarge the place of your tent, stretch your tent curtains wide, do not hold back, lengthen your cords and strengthen out your stake. And I felt like the Lord wanted to release over Mary. It's time for you to receive your promise. So if you raised your hand for a Mary, will you just lift your hands to the Lord? We're just going to release that. So, Father, I just release this. Even if Mary is watching online, Father, I just release. It's time for you to receive your promise. The very thing that you had been hoping for, whether it's a child, whether it's a child coming back to the Lord, whether it's increase in their life, the Lord is saying prepare, spare no expense, pull the curtains wide, get ready increase is coming. So Father, I just release this over Mary and I just say, Lord, let your word come forth and bear fruit right now, Lord. I pray let it be a sign and a wonder to her that she is not forgotten, but it's time to receive her promise right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians 2.13 says, this is what we speak, not in words taught us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit explaining spiritual realities with spirit-taught words. Holy Spirit, we need those spirit-taught words. Holy Spirit, open our hearts to receive what you are saying. We need to be tuned to the language of the Holy Spirit. He's leading and guiding us into places that require a key called faith, and you can't go through the door without it. Trust the Holy Spirit's leadership in your life. He is the one that Jesus promised to fulfill you, to never abandon you, to comfort, to counsel, and empower you. He's your source, and we need to learn the Spirit-taught words. It's the language of heaven. So, Father, I just release your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being here. And I just pray, if you, if you just say, I want to be a place for the dove to rest, for the Spirit of God to rest, I just want to release this today. Would you just lift your hands to the Lord right now? Holy Spirit, look, here is a group of people that are saying, I want to be a place where you will rest. Lord, I pray that you would speak to them now. Lord, all this time during this sermon, I, I've been saying words, but you've been saying more than my words, Lord. You've been speaking into their hearts. You've been sharing things with them. You have been, you have been opening up their ears to hear like the prophet Samuel, who only knew the voice of Eli, and then in an instant he knew your voice. So I pray, Lord, open their ears to hear right now in Jesus' name. I pray for clarity now. I pray for clear direction for those that have been believing, God, and they've been asking you for like different things, different seasons, different scenarios in their life. They're trying to figure things out. Lord, in your presence is everything that they will find, God, that you can supernaturally sustain them in your presence. If you need a miracle right now, I just want to pray for you. If you need a miracle in your body, whatever it is, I felt like the Lord really wanted to do some miracles today. So if you need a miracle, would you just lift your hands right now? Right now. So, all right, now I want to empower you as healing ministers. So look around the room. 
and go to anybody that's got their hands up and just put your hand on their shoulder or if you're a woman, grab a hand and you are gonna be empowered right now because the dove is resting on you, the spirit of God, just like Peter's shadow would heal people. You have the power to heal through the Holy Spirit. Acts 4 says, stretch out your hand, Lord, that healing power and signs, wonders, and miracles would flow through your holy servant, Jesus. So Father, we just released miracles in this room right now, instant healings, miracles that the doctors would be blown away, that every person in their family would be blown away because you are the healer, Jesus, and you have not forgotten. And we have not forgotten that promise. It was by your stripes that we are made whole. So we just release the healing power of Jesus right now in this room. Lord, it was your stripes and that was sufficient payment. And we thank you that your blood has still not lost its power. So we thank you for your blood that is still powerful. We just thank you for your healing power, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your power. We thank you for your power. Thank you for your power. Young man in the blue shirt right here, what's your name? Sam, pastor was telling me a little bit about your journey that um, he said this young man gave his life to the Lord and has just been all in. And Sam, what I saw when I looked at you and the reason I asked pastor, I said, man, that man is hungry for the Lord. There is a tangible hunger of God on your life. Just like my friend Josh I was telling you about earlier, same things on your life. And it's a gift. And if you have ever been around hungry people, it makes other people hungry around them. And so you are carrying something so supernatural. And so the guys stretch out your hands towards Sam today. Father, we just bless this young man. Lord, I pray, Lord, he would be hungry for your word, hungry for your presence, Lord. You said in Matthew 4 that man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And Lord Jesus, you said this, I've got food that you do not know of. My food is to do the will of the one who sent me. So Father, I bless Sam. I bless Sam with this contagious appetite, Lord. There's been a lot of things floating around that have been contagious, but I pray his hunger would be more contagious than anything else, Lord, that the CDC would put a watch on him and say, watch out. You get around him, you'll get hungry for God. So Lord, I bless him now in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, you would surround him Lord, with these people in this church to encourage him, to build him up, to break off lies when he encounters those things. But also, Lord, he is a gift. He is a sign and a wonder, Lord, that you have not forgotten the next generation, that you are moving in their lives. So we bless our friend. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Anybody else need anything? The healer's here today. Jesus is here. Come on, let's just spend like the next 60 seconds in his presence. We love your presence, Jesus. We say we are a people of your presence. As David would lay awake in his bed at night, Lord, he would say, my soul longs for you. My soul thirsts for you in a dry and weary land. As a deer pants for water, so my soul thirsts for you. David said, one thing that I ask, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon his beauty, to seek him in the temple, Lord. God, David was provoked with jealousy. Lord, when your presence went into open Edom's house, and the Bible says that everything in his house was blessed, and David says, I gotta get the presence back. I just bless you right now with the presence of God, that it's resting on you, that it will change your countenance, that people will say, your smile just seems brighter. What do you do? Did you whiten your teeth? Did you do something? Did you get LASIK surgery? There's something in your eyes. Let them see the glory of God resting on you. Lord, I pray that, Lord, there would, be, there would just be this amazing overflow of the joy of the Lord in their lives. And the next time they hear bad news, Lord, they won't go to worst case scenarios. No, they'll go to joy. Like, you know what that means? That means God's up to something good. That means God's about to release revival. Did you hear about what happened? This young man named Josh got born again in his truck. Jesus visited him. That's the good news I'm partnering with. Lord, I pray that that will be what they start hearing and seeing as they're going to go to best case scenario. I just hear the Lord say, you are going to start going to base, best case scenario for from here on out. Lord, let it happen. Rearrange them. And I just bless them. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand. I want you to stay standing just for a moment. When Jared was sharing that story about Josh and the Spirit of God drawing him, the Lord just quickened the scripture to me, John 6, 44. Jesus said, no man comes unto the Father. No man comes to me unless the Father draws him. I want you to bow your head just for a moment. Because I felt the Spirit of God say that I'm doing that right here today. There's somebody here today, and when you heard that story about Josh, you said, hey, that's what God's been doing in my life. I've, I have this hunger for God, and it's been coming upon me in a stronger way than ever before, and I'm not sure what's going on, but the Father's been drawing you, and He's brought you to this place today. And this is your come to Jesus moment in a new and a fresher way than you've maybe ever known him before that God's been drawing you out of your circumstances out of your just a, a type of resistance and he's broken that this morning and there's a great liberty for you here today and you heard that story I don't know who you are it could be more than just one but I felt the spirit of God say that I'm drawing somebody to me today if that's you and God's been drawing on your heart and he's pulling you closer to Jesus and this is your moment that I just want you to step out of where you are. This is really bold, but you have to step out of where you are. When God draws you, he calls you to move. He says move. See, Josh couldn't just sit there and hold that into himself. He had to get a hold of Jared and say, Jared, God's doing this in my life. I need to talk to somebody. I need to move towards God. I, I need to move. I need to respond to his draw upon my life. And God needs you to move right now. So whoever that is, you just move. Just come to this altar right now. We just want to pray with you, pray over you. God's moving you, moving you, moving you. Come on, we're just waiting a moment. Come on, God's got that encounter. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Anybody else? Anybody else? You have that draw of God upon your life. This isn't just about hanging out with God. Not just, This isn't about going to church. God's drawing you to himself, to Christ. Jared, come with me. Come on, let's pray, son. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands out here to these young men. Come on, God's raising up young men. He's raising up a generation. We're not giving over the next generation to this world. We're not going to allow this world to have its voice, to have its influence on the next generation. We're going to agree with God that he's raising up young men and women to say yes to God, to answer the call. Father, we thank you today. God, we thank you for your draw upon these men, Father. God, move upon their hearts right now in Jesus' name. Lord, it's a yes that you ask for. You just ask us to say yes. You don't ask us to understand it. You don't ask us to figure it out. You just ask us to say yes with all of our hearts, Father. So I thank you for these men that are saying yes to you, God, that have sent your call, your draw upon their life. And we just affirm them right now, God. That they are called by God. They are drawn by the Father into a closer, deeper, more intimate relationship with their Savior than ever before. That, Father, this will be a marked moment in their life today. God, they'll look, God, they'll look back upon this day and say, I, I, I remember that day when I felt God's draw upon my heart. I felt the Spirit of God just pulling me. It wasn't something I was seeking after. It was God reaching into my heart and drawing me to Him. So, Father, I thank you for your draw upon their lives today, Father. And I thank you, God, for the purpose and the plans that you've ordained for them. And we just commit them to you today in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody give God a praise this morning. Amen.